Hi, my name is Neha. Today at the Center for Policy Research, we will be talking about the facts of on-site sanitation in urban India. My talk today will be structured around four key questions. First, why examine the state of urban Indian on-site sanitation? Second, how did we do it? Third, what did we find or are deviations the real norm? Fourth, how do we improve to get better and safer systems? Let's begin by understanding why in the first place do we need to study urban on-site sanitation systems. Of all the water that we use on a daily basis, 80% is returned as wastewater. Of this, one-fourth contains urine and excreta and is highly contaminated with fecal pathogens. The remaining three-fourths is a result of activities such as bathing, washing clothes, washing utensils, etc. Unsafe management of this wastewater has profound public and environmental health implications. And just as the sources of water vary widely, so does the degree of management that is accorded to the wastewater. For those of us living in metros or big cities, flushing and forgetting is made easy by the centralized sewer system. These systems are complex and expensive to build and operate. That is why 65% of all households that are connected to sewers are concentrated in the 46 million plus cities in the country. 52% of the toilet owning urban population is served by on-site sanitation systems. These systems such as septic tank systems and leaching pits contain wastewater on site and impart varying degrees of treatment to it. These on-site sanitation systems however benefit from only limited institutional attention and it is imperative to assess their typology, efficiency at fulfilling their intended objective and the extent of safety that they ultimately impart. So then how did we go about studying these systems? We conducted a sample survey of 3000 households in 10 Indian cities across 4 Indian states. We created a site selection methodology which focused on hydrogeological parameters such as depth to groundwater and soil type among other factors such as the dependence on on-site sanitation systems, access to in-house toilets, the dependence on groundwater sources and the population size of the cities. Within these cities, we selected wards based on the spatial diversity that they cumulatively offered. Coming to what did we find or are deviations the real norm? We find that 9 out of 10 on-site sanitation systems are septic tanks with different mechanisms for effluent management. Single pits and twin pits are rare on the whole but are three times more common in prevalence when the household is constructing the toilet under a subsidy compared to when it is privately constructed. On the whole, 88% of these pit-based systems are single pits. Even when twin leaching pits are found, these twin pits on the ground are interconnected and are essentially pits in series, they do require some degree of intervention to be considered safe. We do see overall that 92% of households that rely on on-site sanitation systems use them exclusively for the management of black water and sullage or grey water is directly disposed into the drains in 90% of the case. A key objective for us has been to understand whether or not these systems comply with the governing standards and impart the degree of safety that they are meant to impart. So we see that a septic tank which is compliant to the IS code looks something like this. These systems, however, are widely different from the ideal that the governing codes describe. A septic tank designed for a household of five on average is eight feet in length, eight feet in depth and about six feet wide. It is connected directly to the train and is often located underneath the building or the toilet making access hard. The average volume for such a tank can be about 13,000 liters. We find that deviations along each of the characteristics that the governing code defines contribute together to present a complex and multifaceted reality for on-site sanitation systems. In fact, if you look at particular requirements that are posed by the Indian Standard Code, such as the location of the structure, ventilation, capacity of the system, chambering, maintenance and effluent management, less than 2% of all septic tanks actually comply with these major requirements. 94% of these systems are oversized in relation to the size that the IS code prescribes, with one third being greater than 16,000 litres in the capacity. We also note interestingly that 7% of these systems are directly connected to sewers. 
In addition to the design and maintenance of these systems, households also deviate when it comes to the maintenance of these systems. These systems accumulate sludge over time. This sludge must be evacuated at periodic intervals for continued efficiency of the system's operation. In fact, the IIS code recommends that when the sludge and scum exceeds about half the depth of such a tank, it should be emptied. When it comes to the sizes that the IIS code recommends, this translates to about a half yearly or yearly desludging of the tank. But we do see that the systems that households build are very very large in relation to the recommended sizes. This means that only 13% of all surveyed households reported that they had emptied their OSS even once during its lifetime. Of these 65% claim that backflow or choking of the toilet acts as the trigger for requiring desludging. Households exert the tolerance limit of such a system for years before seeking maintenance to restore the system performance. When it comes to emptying the system, ULB is the most commonly sought after service provider. However, manual cleaning of these systems is also prevalent at 17%. Through our study, we have also determined that household level characteristics are strong determinants not only of the type of system but also its design and the level of maintenance that is imparted to it. We see that across the spectrum of stakeholders, masons, planners, ULB engineers and of course households, there is negligible to no awareness regarding the governing standards or the CPHEO manual. It is clear that on-site sanitation systems are non-compliant and present a compelling need for improvements. These improvements range in scope from design and construction to operation and maintenance. For septic tanks, this means enhancing the primary treatment at the household level, timely emptying the tank and managing the effluent resulting from the tank operations safely. Pits which are found in diverse hydrogeological settings, even in ones which might not be conducive to their operations, must be retrofitted through mitigatory measures for these high-risk zones. Furthermore, the efficiency and safety of leaching pits in dense urban environments should be on the whole assessed. This brings us to our last question. How do we improve to get better and safer systems? For septic tanks, which form the overwhelming majority of on-site sanitation systems, there is a clear ladder to safety. While septic tanks connected to open drains are a reality for most towns and cities in India, the introduction of an FSTP can still help safely manage septage and sludge that is evacuated from these systems. So what next? Sewer systems have a limited applicability when it comes to small towns and cities in the current context. So then should septic tanks be connected to soak pits? Well, that depends on not only hydrogeological parameters for a given setting, but also the overall spatial system density that it would result in. The third approach could be to convey the effluent from these septic tanks to a decentralized effluent treatment facility via a twin drain system or the small bore system. The applicability of these solutions will not only differ across settlements but also within settlements and require extensive micro planning. While safely managing effluent alongside sullage is one of the first steps that can be taken towards safer and better on-site sanitation systems, there is a lot more that can be done. What is needed is a portfolio of interventions encompassing planning, governance and design. Three key sets of recommendations emerge from the present study. First, tinkering with systems and standards. This would entail innovating in system design and toying with the possibility of prefabricating these systems. This would mean revising old standards to mainstream these alternatives and creating new ones which covered these in their scope. And the third would be to safely manage effluent as previously discussed and consider retrofitting systems that already exist. The second set would be to understand the system in its context. Households need to be sensitized towards the importance of on-site sanitation and what it means for them. Second, planners need to understand that the household level infrastructure poses some serious downstream requirements that need to be reckoned with. Third, the nexus between on-site sanitation systems and the service ecosystem within which they exist must also be addressed. 
Lastly, we need to focus on building capacities and frameworks for effective implementation of these interventions. To be able to do this, we need to create better local data for effective micro planning. We need to strengthen the capacities and competencies of the ULBs to utilize this data for the purposes of planning and monitoring. We also need to train the masons and impanel them with the ULB so stricter quality control can be maintained over the type of systems that are built. This report has been prepared under the Scaling City Institutions for India initiative at the Center for Policy Research. You can find out more about the group and this research on cprindia.org. Thank you for watching.